Welcome to the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. I'm your host, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And this is where we dive in each week to give advice, tools, and tips for high achieving, purpose minded women who've written nonfiction books and want to amplify their message beyond the book. I'm a college professor, and when I'm not doing that, I am speaking, coaching, mentoring, and teaching high achieving women who have written books how to use their books to make a bigger difference, have more impact and purpose. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. So glad you're here for season two, Beyond the Book. And today I'm talking with Ryan Dowdy. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Ryan. Ryan Dowdy did everything right in life. She had a dream job, a six-figure salary, married kids, and a nice home, and still woke up one day feeling completely unfulfilled. She knew something wasn't right. She realized it was because she was chasing a dream that wasn't hers. And she found the more success on her journey, she felt alone and misunderstood by peers. That's when she realized she didn't have a community to come to as the truest version of herself. Today, Ryan's mission is to create a safe space for every woman who has ever been told she's too much, too picky, too loud, too anything. She creates a space for them to come together and be fearlessly themselves. Because when women connect, she says, when they work together and harness their power into one common mission, they will be invincible. Ryan has been featured in Forbes, NBC, Fox, Associated Press, and so much more. And she's the author of the book, the 100K Sales Method. Welcome, Ryan Dowdy. Hey, Robin. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) I'm glad you're here. All right. So you heard your kind of formal introduction bio. Why don't you tell us in your own words about who you are and your work in general, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Ryan. Um, I live outside of Kansas City, Missouri. I am married. I have three kids. I have a 17-year-old stepdaughter, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. Uh, so never, ever a dull moment. Um, I had a 15-year corporate career uh, in sales. I built um, and trained sales organizations. So that was kind of my superpower was making uh, sales organizations run, making them profitable. I like to tell people that I eventually retired from the corporate world. I was the director of sales uh, for a digital advertising agency when I left to start my first brand, which was the Uncensored Sales Accelerator. Uh, There we helped high achieving women leave their nine to five and build profitable businesses, which is where the book comes into play. I had an opportunity to start a second business with a business partner in 2020, end of 2020, beginning of 2021 called Social Sellers Academy, where we trained sales teams for entrepreneurs uh, and then ultimately decided to do a massive reinvention um, in the fourth quarter of 2021, launched Be In The Room. And, you know, so often we start the business that uh, that we needed, right? So I created the space that I needed in that journey of, of finding fulfillment, of waking up as the CEO of you know a rapid growth company and feeling really miserable and overwhelmed and stressed and alone and burnt out. And so I, I learned that I was not alone in that journey, which led me to uh, creating the Be In The Room community and creating that space. I love that Be In The Room, Be In The Room community. Tell yeah. us a little more about the thinking about that title, Be In The Room. So we ultimately... <laughs> This is my marketing brain. I'm going to put that hat on for you real quick. We wanted to call it the room, right? Because it was all about getting in the room and being in the right room and being in the room with the people who, you know, who who got you and understood you and could inspire you and, and all those different things. And ultimately, I was unable to trademark the room. So we played around with what is it? And it's about being in the room. So we just called it be in the room. And so that's what we're, we're trademarking and those types of things. But it is about being in the room yeah. um, and being in that space and sharing that space with other smart, high achieving, successful women who desire to do life and business differently. Yes. Yes. And I think being in the room does express it fully. It's yeah. The room. Yeah. yeah. All right. And we clearly hear that you have passion around this work, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and so tell us, you have passion around building community for women. Tell mm-hmm. us all about that, why you're so passionate. Absolutely. Well, I think first and foremost, it comes from like, we we were not meant to do life alone, you know, like regardless of, of your faith or where you sit, like, I just don't believe that God intended us to do life alone. We're supposed to do life in community. We're supposed to surround ourselves with people. But what I personally found is, 
you know, we're all chasing this version of success, right? As you heard in my bio, I was chasing a version of success that was not my own, but it seems that the higher up the ladder we climb, the lonelier it becomes, the less people understand us, the less people get it, right? The less people you can go to and and be honest about the challenges that you're having or to celebrate the wins that you're having, right? There's some people that don't want to hear how wildly successful you are, right? There's some people that, you know, view your problems as less than somebody else's because you're successful. And uh, I just found a lot of isolation in that. And and for myself personally, when I was going through, you know, kind of my my spiritual journey, um, it was actually almost a year ago at the time of recording this, which July of 2021, where I just had this kind of breakdown moment of, I don't even know where to go to discuss this. Like, you know, I'm a thought leader here. You know, I built these community here. My friends, they love me so much, but they don't understand me. My husband is an amazing human. He still doesn't fully get it. And so it was like that there's, but I looked around at all these successful women and in having conversations found they were all feeling the same way. So it was like, why, why are we doing this? <laughs> why are we trying to figure this out alone? It's so silly to do so. Um, and so I wanted to build a community that's not, you know, we don't, we don't follow a curriculum. It's not a course. It's not a program. It's not, uh, you know, a blueprint on how to, it's just literally collaboration. All of our live events are collaboration. Uh, we have strategic advisory boards that come in and, and, and train and educate and inspire our membership. So it, it really is just a safe space to come together. And it's so cool to watch women become friends and women do business together and women support one another and women rally around one another and women to call each other on their BS where it's like, Hey girl, like how much of this is you versus them. And it's just such a rewarding and exciting space to be. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. And you've built a community with over 7,000 women. That's awesome. It speaks to the need that's there. Yeah. So our, my first Facebook community, so that was when I was teaching sales. So we built community. And that's when I realized that community was kind of my jam was I just loved watching that inspiration happen. You know, like it was just so fun to see like, oh, these two people do business together. And these two people are friends now. And these two people are launching a program together. Like I found that I found immense joy in that versus just teaching sales. And so that's what really led to the evolution. I see. I see. That's wonderful. You know, for this podcast, as you know, it's leadership purpose and we're focusing on beyond the book and for high achieving women who are authors, purpose minded, Mm -hmm. written books and want to build their businesses around the book. But, you know, I feel all high achieving women, we have common issues across the board, regardless of the work we do. But this is pointed for authors. So what do you feel like the the women I just described, what they might be missing when it comes to community? I think it's it's a safe space to truly be yourself. I think a lot of times we are members of community. I think it's almost impossible to go through life and not be a member of a community, but a community where you can show up as the fullest version of yourself, right? So you had shared, I, I published a book in January, 2022, and I was not anticipating the amount of vulnerability that goes into that, right? Because I wrote my book on things that I had trained on, talked about, done a million times. So I didn't anticipate that. I was like, oh my God, there's like a part of me that's about my children wandering around in the world, right? Um, And people are going to judge it. And that's terrifying. But I, I, I found that, you know, sometimes we can't go and say those things, right? Like I remember standing at church chatting with a woman and she goes, you recently wrote a book, right? And I was like, I literally could have been standing there naked. Like I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> what are you going to say about my book? All these other things. And I think what what's missing from a lot of communities is the space to go and say that. And for that, and for people to be sympathetic and empathetic, not like, oh, poor successful you. It's so hard to be recognized for what you do. So I think for me, it's really that space to be yourself, to express the good and the bad that goes along with putting a piece of your heart and soul out into the world to be published and read and judged. Yes. Yes. A piece of your heart and soul. I understand that very well <laughs> from, my, from my own work and uh, my work mm-hmm. with books. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a thing. So it's wonderful that you have a space for, for, sure. for women to work through those kinds of things. All right. So now your background is in uh, sales strategy and training, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So how did you pivot from that to this new mission? So a lot of it was in in finding my purpose, right? And really, um, have you read the book, uh, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks? One of my favorite. I did a podcast episode on it. (laughs) I'll have to go listen to it. So that book, I've read it several times, right? And so as I'm going through this space where I'm going through this burnout and realizing that what I'm doing is not what I want to be doing, and I have built this business that 
I hate as much as I hated my job and all the other things. I was rereading that book and I literally sat down and I did like the zone of genius exercise. And it was like, what is the work that you can do all day? Right? Like what work leaves you more energized and it does drained. And it, and it's this, right? It's conversations. It's inspiring others. It's like, oh my gosh, Robin, you need to meet so-and-so or, oh, this is the, oh, I just had a conversation with somebody about this. Like you have to check out this book, like being that connector and then watching other people build cool things together. So a lot of it was in that exercise of what about my previous programs, my previous lives did I love? And what about them? Did I not? And like I said, it was really that, that community aspect. And I had also, so last year, you know, between the two businesses, had uh, you know hit the the infamous seven figure mark in business and it and it opened doors in a really powerful way which was cool but what I realized was that by the limitation of okay well you you run a seven figure business so you're allowed in this room or you know you have a corporate job so you have this room or that room we've just left smart women out of important conversations right we've let marketing niche us down so much that we have said. Your value is only when you're running a business that makes a million dollars. Meanwhile, my 15-year corporate career means I know more about business than people running million-dollar businesses because, you know, whatever, you're, you're a professor for crying out loud, right? Like you have so much experience, but to really tie your contribution to a community based on the amount of money you make or based on your job title or based on what you do for a living is really short-sighted. And so for me, it was like, how do we bring together a group of people that are tied together by a psychographic and not a demographic. Yes. Yes. I can't believe it. You too have been impacted by the big leap in way yeah. that <laughs> yeah. really speak to me because I'm that's, you know, the book I always talk about when I talk about this sense of having fulfillment and purpose and meaning in your life. Mm-hmm. I go back to it all the time. Yeah. That's amazing. So I see how it was essential in your changing your and pivoting to your new mission. All right. So now tell us about your ideas on building relationships. You talked about making connection. Yep. Um, so talk about that and how they're connected to growing a business. Uh, so my book, The 100K Sales Method, is literally all about relationships. Like to me, relationships are currency, right? Everything in life, like you're one connection away from that next opportunity, that next book deal, that next six-figure contract, that next spouse, that next friend, that next soulmate, right? Um, it's just your one, one relationship away. So for me, it's all about human to human connection. It's all about relationships, right? And that was what was so different about the way that I've always taught sales is I teach sales in a really relational way, right? I teach sales about building relationships and there's no such thing as wrong relationships. There's no such thing as bad conversations. There's no such thing as bad connections. So for me, it's really about you know, being in relationship with other people about pouring into other people about, you know, having relationships where you can make a phone call or send an email and say, Hey, you know, Robin, I noticed that you had so-and-so as a guest on your podcast, would you feel comfortable making an introduction for me? Right. It all comes down to, to who, you know, and who you have relationships with. Um, and I think a lot of times we spend a lot of time looking at audience size, right? Like it's even in my bio and they're like, Oh, you had a community of 7,000 people. None of that really matters if I don't have relationships with those 7,000 people. Right. If you ask one of those 7,000 people, Oh, you're in Ryan Dowdy's Facebook group. And they're like, who's Ryan Dowdy. Right. Like that's not to me, it's not just about vanity metrics. It's about actually getting to know people. And I think that that is, that has served me so well in my career. And I think a lot of women, I grew up in sales, right? So relationships were something that I always did, but I I didn't know until I started a business that not everybody was understood that or knew how to do it in a genuine way. Right. So it's literally been the cornerstone of what I've done since I started my business back in 2019. Yeah, that's amazing. It does sound like it's probably like you were talking about before in your zone of genius, we were talking about the the big leap, right? This idea of um, relating and connecting. And so what's, what's some advice you would give, let's say a person author has written a book and she's wanting to talk about it more and get it out there more, but she doesn't have this knack that you have. What's the word of advice you can give to her? It's, it's how can you serve, right? In your mind, you're thinking, well, I I have a contact, you know, I, I know this person I could reach out to, but I don't want to ask her for anything. For me, it's how can I serve her? So it's, hey, new friend, new connection. I wrote a book that I think would serve your community really, really well. I would love to share my book uh, with your people. You know, would it be valuable to do a guest expert training or um, to host a book club with my book or something along those lines, right? So not, I'm, I'm not asking that person to do me a favor and share my book with your community, 
It's, I think my book is going to serve your community in a powerful way. Here are some ideas on how we could do that. And I would love to come in and serve your community in that way. And if you can really just turn it from asking for a favor, right? Because that's, I, I, hey, I went through the whole publishing process, right? You have to go and you have to ask people for, you know, testimonials for the book and you want them to share it with their community and all the other things. I'm not asking you to do me a favor. I'm asking if I can serve your community in this way. Would this be valuable if we shared this book that I wrote, um, this expertise that I have, this experience that I share with your community. So it's just a small shift of how can I serve your people? And when we show up in service as women, we tend to feel very comfortable serving, right? When we can show up in service, it it just changes the energy of the exchange. Yes. That makes so much sense. And I would think it makes it more enjoyable too. Of course. This idea of serving, which it's one of the sort of one of the principles I include in my ideas about what purpose is and leadership purpose is. So I love that. Fantastic to hear that. Uh, I can talk to you all day and night, but is it? (laughs) (laughs) Don't get me started on, you know, uh, the big leap. But anyway, uh, in honor of our time, is there something I haven't asked you that you want to share with our listeners today? I think, you know, something to really share when we think about, you know, leadership purpose and, and, you know, beyond the book and putting the book into the world, it's really being intentional with how you use the book. Like I wrote my book and I did a total reinvention and I've not leveraged my book well, but I was recently asked to, for my book to be a book club in somebody else's community, um, which I thought was just a huge honor and a really cool way of doing that. And so I think to me, it's, it's how do we, the book is not just at least for me, my book wasn't just something to sell. It wasn't just something to get clients. It was really a way to serve other people. And so I think when we think of what are some other ways to leverage your book, like it's not just sell copies, right? It's create community around it, right? Take this book and create community around it. How can you rally other people? How can you create people who have a shared commonality or shared goal? I think that's where the true magic happens. It's like, not so much. Let's just build a business, let's build community, right? Let's build community around this thing. And I think for me, it's, that's just, you know, a real way to think about how to leverage your book. Cause I did, I mean, I wrote it and then it was like, well, now what do I do with this thing? Right. What do I do with it? And I think to me, like it is creating, creating community around a, a real tangible thing. Think of, think of book clubs, you know, I'm in a book club. Well, I retired from book club because I stopped reading the books. Uh, but, you know, I mean, literally there's women all over the world that have book clubs. They, they read books and they come together and they talk about them. It's literally their entire community. I have a group of girlfriends, two of which I knew before, five that are new women that I met in this book club. Like think about how much books bring people together, right? Think about that. Like how can you leverage your book in that way to bring people together, to inspire other people? Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome advice. Oh, Ryan, so good. So Thank good. You. I'm sure people are listening, like, how can I get more? So if they're wanting more from you, how can they be in touch with you? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of ways to get in touch with me. Our website is beintheroom.org. Uh, we have a Facebook group called Be In The Room um, that we'd love to welcome you in. If you're interested in the book, it's 100ksalesbook.com. I'll take you directly to Amazon to to deliver that to your door. Uh, But otherwise I I love, I'm an open networker. I'm always on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. It's Ryan with two N's Dowdy. And I love meeting and connecting uh, with people. Ryan, so good to meet you and connect with you and hear and feel your passion and your energy around this work of community. I'm feeling inspired already. (laughs) I'm so glad. Thank you. For run, out and do, run out and do something, right? I'm going to run out and do something right now. So, so good to have you here. Okay, everyone. And if you want to hear more from me, you can find me on my website, robinlowens.com, robinlowens.com, or you can find me on your favorite social media at Robin L. Owens, PhD, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And I'll be happy to hear from you. And until next time, this is Dr. Robin. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. If you enjoyed it, head on over and rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week, and I can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Meanwhile, this is Dr. Robin signing off. See you next time.